Hello, friends, and welcome to another Magic Monday. Uh, this is a deck that I made today and have not tested yet. So, fair warning, this could be a really unsuccessful video. But, as you can see by the title, this is a Yargle Vol Voltron deck. This is with the Yargle and Multani Commander, the 18-6 Frog Spirit Elemental with no special abilities whatsoever, he just big. So the idea here is to try to get him out quickly and try to keep him alive. So we have cards like Feign Death, so we can return him to play. Kaya's Ghost Form, return him to play. Professor's Warning, give him indestructible. Uh, this is just to have a blocker and then make a treasure token if needed. Uh, Undying Malice, same thing. It dies, it comes back. Audacity, um, to give it Trample. That's the other idea here, is we got to give him... He's our main creature. We have other creatures, but we got to give him uh, some some boosts here. So we give him Trample. We give him uh, plus 2-2 two, two and Trample with the Massive Might. We give him Hexproof and a counter with this. We got some equipment, like Team Pennant, Shadow Spear, Trample, Trample, Lifelink, Vigilance. Uh, we got some direct damage to get rid of other creatures. We got some more trample. We got some more direct damage for creatures. Pretty simple deck. Uh, the idea is lots of mana, lots of equipment, and boosts and things to try to keep Yargle and Multani on the board. To try to get uh, either one big trampling hit or, you know, a couple of hits. So we got Rune of Might, again with trample, again with trample. We got Batter Bone to give it Vigilance at Lifelink. Um... This one gives Trample and Haste. Of course, we have to add Hexproof in there if possible. Swiftfoot Boots do the same. Um, another thing to return him to the battlefield. Pretty uh, basic. So Ren is here. Um, just in case there's any kind of board wipe that, uh, you know, I want to be able to hopefully get that emblem to play lands and cast permanence for my graveyard. Just in case. Um... It's, it's also just as much of a distraction, um, something to, to draw some fire away from myself to get people to target the Planeswalker. Um, so it's pretty basic. We have all three of these swords, body and mind, forge and frontier, once in future, to, to try to cover some protection. Um, if we get lucky, we got uh, a slicer here just because I thought it was fun um, to add a, a kicker card here to get a duplicate of something from my opponent's graveyard. Uh, Questing Beast, because there are a lot of uh, Planeswalker heavy decks, and this is very helpful. Um, Viper's Fang, again, to add uh, Hexproof. Vivian, with uh, some artifact removal, prodigious growth, to make him big and get Trample. And a Chroma's Memorial to do Flying, First Strike, Vigilance, Trample, Haste, Protection from Black and Red. That's it. Uh, some special lands, but for the most part, pretty basic stuff. I'm really curious to test this one out and see how it goes. Um, it's It very much feels like a Feast or Famine kind of deck. But this is uh, Yargle and Multani, and uh, wish me luck. Okay. If the hockey starts. There we go. We have our first opponent. Uh, this is M. Carp. I wonder if it's short for Magic Carp. Hello, Magic Carp. Let's say hello. And good game, because we like to have manners. Always have manners, kids. It's very important. Hey, see? Our opponent has manners, too. It says hello. Didn't... Oh, it says nice instead of good game. But I will say thanks. And I wait their move. We got... I love that art. That mana confluence art. It's just very cool. And we've got angels. We are facing angels. That is, frankly, pretty miserable. I, I really... I've talked about this before. Uh, I, I don't like... I don't like angel decks because of this commander. And I know it's not their commander, but um, it's just... It's so broken. It's so stupid. So next turn, we're going to put out the Questing Beast to, to start ramping up. Um, we're going to have to, to end this quickly, I think, because of that Font of Hope so early on. Oh, 
right? I gotta do that before I can play my questing beast. Let's do green. I'm gonna do that. And I kind of feel like I should attack with the Lotus Clover too. Just to see if I can get that Yada off the board. Let's see what they do. I bet they're gonna just not block it. Oh, they're doing it. All right. I think that's a fair trade. I, I lose a little bit of mana speed, but they're angels because you see their commander here is an angel. I'm guessing they have lots of angels. I'm not going to respond to thinking. I don't know what I'm supposed to say to thinking. But yeah, I, I just really want to get that off the board so that their angels don't come in progressively more pumped up. Next turn, assuming that the draw is not anything super terrific for next turn, we'll put out the Druid and the Shadow Spear. Oh, we got our own uh, Ornithopter of Paradise. Let's actually do that instead. Let's get that mana out here. <clears throat> and let's attack with the Questing Beast again. I bet they take more damage. They sure do. Alright, so next turn, we can actually get out our Yargle. Um, and there goes our questing beast, which is most unfortunate. What is this? Whenever a creature and opponent dies, put a 1-1 one -one counter, sacrifice another creature. Okay. Yeah, I've, I've seen it around. I just, I'm just not as familiar with that card as some of the other ones. I don't see that one as much as you'd imagine, actually. Um, but yeah, let's, let's get our boy out here and see how this goes. I'm guessing they'll probably kill him with some sort of creature removal. But I guess if we really want it to be uh, kind of ridiculous, we could do this slicer and make a copy of their Yada just for fun. But that seems kind of wasteful. Um, I, I take it they're searching for some sort of removal for Yargle, which is unfortunate because it would be really cool to be able to put the Shadow Spear on him next turn and have this Rogue Intervention ready to go uh, and have the mana left over, but I'm guessing that's not going to happen. Yep. Bye, Argyle. Uh Take action. Oh, right. I forgot about this. If a creature would uh, die, exile it instead. I forgot about that second part of that. Most unfortunate turn of events here, um, but I can't say that I'm particularly surprised. Ram through doesn't do us any good. Uh, we could get this out and put it on the druid, and then we could ram through to this, but then it'll just return because of the forgotten archangel here so we're not in a very good position and we're also not really drawing the kind of land i would have expected um so let's let's actually do this with the kicker <clears throat> and uh excuse me there let's get our cobra back in hand and let's get a copy of that uh, angel in our hand here um oh actually it's a Target card. So let's grab let's grab D Spark. <clears throat> we can actually do something with D Spark. I forgot it was a target card and not target creature. It's creature from my hand. Uh, no, it's not. It's actually just target card. Okay, I just totally misread it. Never mind. Forget I said anything. So that should actually help us a fair bit. If they... Ugh, life gain. So, next turn we can exile this temporarily. Because I'll just play it again. And we can get out the Lotus Cobra. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't expect this to be a win for us. They have too much life gain. They got the flyer out there. And I'm not getting any land. Uh, Massive Might could be super not helpful at all. Um, so let's despark this. And then we're going to 
see what they do here. What do they do here? Uh, that's super lame. Okay. Um, then let's do... You get plus two, two. And we're going to ram through this to that. <clears throat> I really want to get that card off the board. And that did the trick. Thanks and good game. Um, I could attack for five, but I really kind of need the blocker more than anything. So we're just going to call it there. And they've got six. If they put out a land, they're just putting that angel right back out. Oh, nope. This is even worse. Good game. Yeah. All right. We're done here. We are definitely done here. Uh, there's just nothing. We, we don't have an, enough mana to get Yargle back out. Not having an opportunity to actually have the mana to protect Yargle uh, did not work out in our favor. So we're just going to have to block this guy, and next turn we're just going to be dead. Um, I forgot about that ability. Unless we do that, maybe that will help. So at least we were able to get rid of him. Let's put out this blade and let's equip this onto here because now we're just being stupid. And we'll attack for one. They'll hit us for six and that'll be the end of the game here. There's just nothing I can do to, to slow them down uh, with the way things are going. So no such luck in game one. Oh, that was that was well done. Alright. That's gonna be it for game one. I haven't a, a hope or a prayer. Ugh, disgusting. That's disgusting. Alright, that seems like a good place to call it. I, Heliod is just, ugh. Um, yeah, that's a well-crafted deck there, and again, I, I don't really play to win, but Sometimes it's nice to actually have a good game. I don't really consider that one a particularly good game. I never got enough mana to get Yargle out um, more than once, and he was immediately killed. So that's just bad luck. Hopefully we have better luck in game two. Okay, on to game two against Urgden. Urgden. Urgden? Uh, okay, whatever. So this time we do have, uh, well, just the one, actually, the Druid of the Cowl. Um, again, we gotta be polite. Hello, good game. Because we are not heathens. And they said good game back. Uh, they got the new Omnath as their commander, which is going to be delightful, I'm sure, to face. But we do have our Lotus Cobra early. Uh, next turn we can get out our Viper's Fang. Give our guys some Hexproof. Oh, scoots. Ah, oh, we're just facing like the the chintzy stuff this time. <clears throat> uh, so we got a landfall situation here with Scoot Storm, uh, a Scoot Swarm, excuse me. Um, so they're gonna start making tokens and tokens and tokens. If we can actually manage to get Yargle out and get that on him, we'll be in sh good shape. But otherwise, we're gonna have a problem. Or this, as well, would be a beneficial card to have. So we'll have five mana next turn. We'll probably do those two cards, the Eric's Uprising and the Druid of the Cowl. Um, but pretty soon, they're just going to be making tokens and tokens and tokens. And uh, we're going to be in for a bad time. So let's get that out. Let's get him out. And... I mean, I guess we can attack with the Viper's Fang just to see if they actually block with everything. Kill it. Nope. No such luck. Um, yeah, here comes a land, undoubtedly. Oh, no. Nice. This is 
is a very nice card, especially when coupled with Landfall. Um, we're, we're not looking so good again here, guys. Uh, a little disappointed to say so, but uh, that just seems to be how things are going to go today. Um, no, real, uh, no real luck on our side. Um, no sense in attacking with a seven toughness mother of machines hanging out over here. So for those of you who don't know, permanent enters a battlefield, causes a triggered ability of a permanent to continue to trigger. It does it twice. Hence the giant stack of scoots. Uh, good game because here comes another four lands, which means another ton of them. I, I don't even, this is going to be a ridiculous. Uh, 72, 72 more. Totally reasonable deck that we're playing against here. That is just disgusting. Um, I would really like to draw like a Massacre Worm right now. Um, Massacre Worm would be great. And I might have to actually put that in this deck. Oh, there we go. Protection from green and blue. Again, no land. I don't know what is going on with our lack of land here. But, um... Not happy about it. So we're just going to attack with this 5-8, and they're just going to take it, I guess. <clears throat> but we clearly don't have a chance because they've got 83-1-1 creatures. So that's going to be it. I'm not going to bother wasting your time with them actually playing cards because they're just being like that when they could just end the game. It's a waste of time. Look, look, see, this is the kind of thing that bugs me in this game sometimes, is this this kind of thing. They've clearly won. I am tapped out. I can't do anything about 83-1-1 tokens when I have 25 life. I just can't do it. But instead of just attacking and finishing, they play this to search for another land to put into their hand so that they could play that. And then they're going to have 81 scoot storms making two more tokens each and that's just a waste of my time now i do recognize i'm sitting here talking about this when i could just leave the match but don't don't be like that if you've won just attack and win like don't you don't have to show off like you don't get extra credit don't be stupid let's move on to game three Okay, game three is against a Vorniclex by Cool Guy. Uh, so good news, bad news here. Vorniclex is going to come out really early because I have a feeling we're not going to have a lot of land luck like we haven't all night. And, uh, you know, Vorniclex is a pain with the way he doubles his, the tokens on things. Hey, but we did get a black. Black will be helpful. Um, we only had forests and this arcane signet, but as you can see, we need two black, and now we'll actually be able to have two black mana, as long as they don't destroy our arcane signet here. So they're already up to four mana. Um, they, yep, they've got six. Nice. So turn three, they're ending with six mana on the board, which means we're pretty much already toast. Uh, just, you know, dumb luck or speed or, you know, tremendous design or whatever you want to call it. Um, we are just not having the luck today. Um, so that Vorniclex is going to come out next turn, hit us for six. Uh, he's going to hit us for seven because he's got his little, uh, Flora Hedron here. So here comes the seven damage. I'm just going to say good game now, because this is going just so tremendously well for us. Um, yeah, just, uh, just delightful. Yep. That's it. You're not walking so, I, incidentally, I actually have a deck like this that is designed with Vorniclex and Planeswalkers to double those tokens. Uh, but, for those of you who don't know... Vivian's ability here, you get an emblem with two creatures you get uh, control, get plus two, two, vigilance, trample, and indestructible. 
which is not as um, not as good for me as you might think. Let's say. So what can we do next turn? Well, we can get screwed, basically. Um, but let's see what we can do in the meantime. Uh, we'll have three mana like that. Okay. So we can do this bull strength next turn. Um, yeah, we're just kind of in a bad way. I I'm, I'm not even going to attack. Um, really our, our only shot here is, uh, to get this Akroma's Memorial. Uh, oh, and now they're going to waste my time by using this ability to search for every forest in their deck. Again, folks, um, I, I get it, but also, man, is it annoying. Like, you have an emblem that your creatures uh, have vigilance and indestructible. How long are we going to wait for you to search for every forest in your deck? Also, it would be really nice if Arena added a feature to just, like, select all forest. Stuff like that. Like, select all of type. Um... Because scrolling through your deck and clicking on every forest and making your opponent wait for you. Uh, so 26 times they had to click on the forest to, to get them all out here. It's, it's just kind of absurd. Let, let's be honest. Um, okay, and they're going to draw more cards. Um, they're going to reveal some cards. I'm curious what they're going to find. Probably not going to be a land. Uh, nope. Just a little uh, mana producer that I have one in my deck, incidentally. So let's just do this and block that. That way we only take a little bit of damage. Um, oh, ram through. Now we're talking. Now we're talking. Check this out, folks. We can give our Yargle Flight, and we can ram through this to that to do lots of damage and attack and actually pull off a victory. Wow. That ram through came up big. So, uh, did we have fun? Oof, did we have fun? Not really, honestly. That wasn't a particularly fun match. That was just a lucky draw at the end. Uh, but we did get actual mana this time. We got to play some cards. Um, their speed on their Vorniclex was very impressive, but uh, we were able to pull it off due to a lucky draw. Um, let's do one more game and see how that goes. And for our final game, we are playing uh, Mother of Machines deck. Well, at least we know they won't have a Scoot Swarm in there. Um, we have a terrible opening hand with only two mana and nothing we could play other than this thing that has an enchant creature on it and an instant that targets a creature. We definitely need a mulligan this time around. Um, that's considerably better. Let's, uh, let's see how this goes. Oh, tremendous. Um, Esper Sentinel is just one of those annoying cards. Um, I understand why it's a rare. It's a very potent card whenever an opponent casts their first non-creature spell each turn. Draw a card unless that player pays X, which, where X is Esper Sentinel's power. Uh, it's a very effective card. It's a very obnoxious card. Um, not, I, I'm not a fan of facing it, that's for sure. It is definitely one of the more um, obnoxious things out there. So we're going to hang on to this ram through as much as I really want to kill that Esper Sentinel next turn, uh, because getting that on uh, Yargle, if we can get Yargle some trample, which, spoilers, this gives trample, we might actually be in decent shape to be successful here. So let's get out this Chromatic Lantern. We are not going to pay the one, because I really want to get out this Incubation Druid as well. So that will bring us up to six mana next turn. So we got our three lands, we got our two mana producing creatures and a chromatic lantern. Um, 
I really love Cabal Stronghold. I have one of these in, in paper copy as well. I uh, really love that card, especially in a mono black deck. It's stupid overpowered. Um, also, shout out to Dominaria. That was a fantastic set. I bought a couple boxes of that, um, one of which I held on to and sold years later. But um, Dominaria was, was one of the most fun sets in the past 10 years. I uh, really enjoyed drafting it. Um, it just, it was just such a good set. I, I can't say enough good things about it. So actually let's get out this Cabal Stronghold because, uh, I, I like it. So we're going to get out our Yargle and we won't have enough mana to equip this Vigilance Trample, but we can do a Hexproof and Indestructible if they target our Yargle next turn. Or this turn, I guess, if they have something with one mana. So here's a Saga. They get to discard something and bring it back into play. Uh, what are they going to do? Something tells me it's going to be something that gains life. No, they did nothing with that. Okay, I'm, I'm fine with that. Is uh, Elish Norn coming out? Or... It's actually, I don't know if I said hello in good game. I don't remember if I did, but we're going to do our manners and we're going to give this hexproof and indestructible and see if they have something else to make that not happen. But uh, yep, we're good. We protected our Yargle. That might be all we need. Uh, as long as they don't get rid of him at the beginning of my turn, I can give him trample. I can do a ram through to this Esper Sentinel and then finish it off with an actual attack. Um, so for those of you who don't know, as you as you saw, the, the title of this deck is Yargle Voltron. Um, Voltron, the old 80s cartoon, um, the idea was a whole bunch of robots that joined together to make a bigger robot. And, um, and that's kind of the idea behind this deck is uh, you make one big thing, uh, you put a bunch of other stuff on it, in this case, equipment or enchantments or whatever. Um, so Voltron is somewhat regularly used, I think, in the magic uh, circles from players to, def to uh, describe decks like that, where you build something up and up and up um, to make it like that. I, I actually have a commander deck based on an old commander from way back when, um, whose name escapes me at the moment. He's a 10-4 and the idea is get him out, get him hexproof, get him trample, get him bigger and bigger and bigger. Um, and it was a budget deck. With the commander, the total value of the deck was like $21 or something like that. Uh, at least when I built it um, five, seven years ago. Uh, so I was really into the idea of like a budget commander deck that somebody could go on TCG Player or wherever and, and build an actual paper deck for, you know, relatively inexpensive, including the commander. So I built a, a Voltron deck. And ever since then, uh, it's, it's a concept I like to play with every now and again. So we ended up two and two with this Yargle uh, Voltron deck, which overall I'm pretty happy with. Um, the, the last game here, we actually had good mana production. The game before we had good mana production. The two games where we didn't draw any land, um, we had some bad luck. Go figure. So that's it. Uh, this was another episode of Magic Mondays. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, if you did, please like, subscribe, tell a friend. Um, you know, make a friend just to tell them about the channel. That's also cool with me. So uh, again, thank you for watching. Uh, this has been Alex. Please take care of yourselves and each other.